Well, good afternoon, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. I want to bring you a quick forecast update. I am uh, actually traveling at a conference right now, and so uh, just trying to sneak in a uh, update between some breakout sessions at a conference I am at here just to give you an idea. We've got some changes on the way. as It's been kind of on the cooler side here, uh, as you know, the past couple of days. We're going to warm up tomorrow pretty nicely again and into the weekend, but our moderation period is on, border, uh, on uh, borrowed time here rather and uh, I tell you every uh, passing run of the model it, it just sort of uh, the borrowed time seems to get less and less on this you know last week it looked like the moderation period was going to last out until say oh, around the 10th or so of February and now it's starting to push uh, back just a, a little bit and uh, it looks like by about the 1st of February as we transition in we could be going back into a much colder regime but uh, the bigger big time cold still looking to come a few days beyond that uh, but right now February looking just very cold to me at this point so enjoy the moderation while we can get it. Here's the way the uh, upper air charts look for today. Right now we're kind of in a trough that is exiting here. Let um, me just back up a couple of days. That's what was responsible here for the cold air yesterday. And we had this upper level low that was over here. It sort of spit out some snow flurries uh, for us as well. That's exiting off. And as we go into tomorrow, uh, we get into a nice little ridge here. So that'll uh, start to clear out the skies, bring some sunshine back. It'll also bring some warmth with it. Then we got a front that moves through this weekend. A trough uh, swings through and we get a front moving through. As a result of that, we start to warm up and get a little bit more mild then next week. But then watch this. We've got a big trough that's set to swing here uh, right around uh, between the 1st and 3rd or so of uh, February. And just, just, just kind of notice what's going on here as you go through this. Watch this feature in Alaska. You've got a low and just watch it get replaced here. Uh, what you've got going on is this high pressure, this massive ridge of high pressure lift out of the North Pacific Ocean. And watch how it goes poleward. As it goes poleward, what you've got going on here is just this massive ridge out into the west. And remember uh, back in January and early in December and early on, whenever uh, we had this huge uh, big time cold around here, well, it was all responsible. Uh, in large part at least by uh, this feature out here and uh, what we call this uh, is a negative EPO and that's what you see uh, in this, this feature right here a negative East Pacific oscillation and whenever you get this uh, uh, this massive ridge that builds a uh, poleward up here so high you get a highly amplitude highly amplified jet stream if I can learn how to talk here and so you've got a jet stream watch this is sort of coming up like this and going over that ridge and then sort of down in here and up like that and so watch what you've got the source region uh, for your air that's coming down into here is is coming Coming right down here from the you know from the North Pole and on down so that can bring some very cold air with it and notice this a piece of the polar vortex uh, here displaced the North Pole is sort of up in here somewhere it's displaced a lot uh, further south just to the north of Hudson Bay here this uh, I think eventually you're gonna see this displaced more into uh, this neck of the woods as we go on later into February and right now February frankly is just looking very very cold to me as a result of it and so if you're looking at your indices on, on this, what you've got going on here is a negative AO, a negative Arctic oscillation. An Arctic oscillation is, uh, uh, you know, directly responsible uh, for cold air on the move from Canada is basically what it's telling you. And that's this is a negative AO feature right here. That's your negative EPO feature. And the fact that you've got a ridge out here in the west rather than that, uh, well, that's another feature that we call a positive PNA. Uh, and the data is all suggesting that for us. And uh, it, it looks like those features are going to stick around for a good little while. And honestly, those features are some are a recipe for some long-term uh, cold. If we just sort of look at the, the data going on here, the EPO looks to be tanking and again goes firmly back into the negative. The green is your ensemble mean here, and this goes all the way out into mid-March. Uh, but, uh, you know, each each of the ends of these lines represent the different 50 ensemble members where some of that data fell. And you can kind of see the 25 to 70 percent of those uh, members fell within the gray shaded range here. So we're firmly going into the negative. And some of the data points that we could go just ridiculously into the negative as well. And these, uh, you know, whenever, whenever you go just... Um, Whoa, hello there. Uh, whenever you go just uh, ridiculously into uh, the negative like that, 
like what we see if these members are right uh, when you're when you're dipping down into this range that's the extreme cold uh, that we saw um, uh, you know, uh, just uh, with the below zero and, and all that, and that's not where we want to go again. But some of the data is hinting we go there. And if you look at the other indices, well, your Arctic oscillation, we're in the positive right now. We're entering that warm up phase, but we're dipping down into the negative, and it looks like we stay in the negative. And again, as you look through this, some of the data hints that uh, you know the mean is more above this, but there are hints that we could go firmly into the negative with this as well positive pna like i showed you there again if we go extremely positive that is a trough over us in the eastern part of the united states and a ridge out west all of those uh, three things speaking together to show you what i visually showed you on the map here and that sets us up for a very very cold period coming up again and so you know honestly if just to be sort of uh, bluntly honest about this um um you know we could end up with a uh you know, a pretty uh, doggone uh, cold uh, result uh, out of this, and so if I if I just take you over here to uh, well, let's take a look at the uh, the uh, EPS. Uh, I'm going to the wrong site here. I should have had this already pulled up. My apologies here. But if we just take a look at the uh, you know what the ensembles here are suggesting for us, temperature wise, as we go out, uh, let's just go out in time a little bit here, and um, let's take this. Uh, in, in five day chunks here and let's just go out a little bit further as as the uh, this is the latest of the european weeklies here and illustrate it pretty well so we stay uh, moderation period stays reasonably on the mild side until we get to here about the first but then as you start to extend that out a little bit further in time now let's go out to 15 days you're starting to see that cold air come what happens when you get that negative epo dump is it comes into the central united states first and then it starts to bleed southward and eastward and that's exactly what we're seeing by day 15 you're starting to see that here and then watch as you go uh, in the day uh, 15 to 20 range here you're getting some extreme cold start to come in here and then just watch as I keep putting this uh, forward in five day chunks and keep in mind this is an ensemble so that's still pretty cold uh, it's a pretty cold signal whenever these ensembles are often having a warm bias and look at this by the time you get to 25 to 30 day 30 to 35 you're still within this uh, cold range here here's day 35 to 40 still in the cold range day 40 to 45 still cold this is significant and that's that's suggesting to us that all the way through the beginning to the mid part of march we could be facing some long term cold out of this now you know is it going to be extreme cold all the time that's hard to say uh, but you know I do think some extreme cold would be on the table again what you're going to come into is we've had a little moderation period here and the cold has uh, come back up and it's reloaded and as a result of that what you're going to have I think is sort of repeating the pattern that we went through in late December into uh, into much of January where we had uh, just this two three week period of ridiculous cold again that's going to come to us in February and that looks to hang around for a while so if you're looking at this and saying well are we have any hopes of an early spring i am not seeing it right now unfortunately i just not seeing it now with this as a result we're going to need to watch for some storms and indeed <clears throat> modeling is all hinting at some storms let me back up here the first of that comes through this weekend as we head into saturday we've got a little bit of rain that starts to break out over the area it's nothing significant uh, but the bigger storm will come next week then. And so watch this as we get into about the 1st of February. That's when we've got this storm. And the modeling is sort of all over the pace, place run to run with that. So on today's GFS, the low develops here in Oklahoma and starts to pull right over southern Indiana. Notice there's a winter side uh, onto the northwest side of the low of this. And you get maybe just a little bit of snow changing over on, on the back side as you exit. It probably wouldn't put out impressive amounts, uh, to be completely honest with you. But notice then. Uh, you know there's there's more uh, lows uh, clipper systems and things that just sort of come one right after the other so it looks like we could be setting up to a very active period as you come into that first part of February but let's just take a look at this uh, so for example this you know on today's GSFS this is rain going to snow but let's look at last night's last night's got all the attention from the weather weenies out there because uh, you know look at this so the low starts to develop down here and track north and that gives one heck of a snowstorm to the area it's almost a very similar uh, 
subtract to what we just experienced with the storm uh, that brought us, uh, you know, some freezing rain and then, you know, an inch or so of sleet before several inches of snow. On top of that, it's almost the exact same path again. What are the odds that we could get a, a low tracking twice in pretty much the same location in the same year? Well, it's not statistically impossible, but it does not happen very often. So I'm, I'm so skeptical of it just based on odds, if nothing else. But again, we, this was last night's run, and you know, you see that, and that's an impressive storm. And by the way, it did show uh, several more systems uh, coming up behind it on its run as well. But you notice the low is in a much different position. So right now, uh, again, uh, there, there's no way to nail down exactly what this is going to be. For you know, just for comparison, I can show you the euro here, and the euro sees this storm here as well. And you see it's a rain on today's euro. It's a rain going to some light snows. It's not a mega snowstorm with this, uh, and it showed virtually the same thing last night. Uh, it was a little heavier on the on the snow totals last night than it is today. So was the GFS for that matter, though. So there's there's going to be some issues. Canadian sees this as well. Here's uh, here's about Wednesday night on on the uh, 31st you go in here into the 1st of February and you've got some rain for some of us changing to ice and then a snow component to that towards the north and so it doesn't see the exact same thing that you see it's the same storm but it, it's a, a different uh, flavor of a storm than what you see on the other two models but reality uh, regardless we've got something to track come up about the first and so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that uh, that's sort of your key takeaway for this I can't tell you whether it's gonna be a rain to snow or an all snow or just some rain or whether there's going to be an ice component mix in or not we're a week and a day out from this thing arriving right now but models are starting to dial in on something coming and whenever you have a pattern like this it's ripe for it again we're going to have that deep trough let me go back here this this is what you have coming into it uh, on on here on the euro ensembles this is that deep trough that would produce this kind of a storm uh, coming in off of it with some with some uh, cold coming behind it and another thing i just would you know point out to you any time you have a sharp transition when you're going from firmly in the positive to firmly in the negative you want to watch that uh, transition zone because right in that transition zone that's where you can get some big storms would you carefully note what that transition zone is and that's right whenever the modeling is hinting at something for us so i think the pattern is certainly ripe for something like this to happen but we're not going to be able to know the specifics until a little bit later on down the line if we try to get a little bit more specific with it here and we take a look, uh, just dialing here on southern Indiana weather I forecast for, and I know many of you watch me for not in southern Indiana, but for those of you that are watching from southern Indiana here, here's the Evansville uh, temperature profile from the EPS, uh, the Euro Ensembles here. And you can see it is trying to hint at this. Um, if I get off of this here, it is trying to hint at this, where you where you have that storm system, uh, a nice size warm up for there, and then you go back down. It sees a moderation period then after that. But if this sets the ensembles, if you go to the deterministic model, well, it gets mighty doggone cold, and so you've got a very warm here, and then absolutely tanking as a result of that coming in. And just for the record, the GFS is in reasonable agreement with that as well. Again, the specifics are are not completely there, but uh, we've got some things with that. So, bottom line is we've got a, a pretty sustained period of cold uh, coming here uh, and uh, you know this pattern looks like it's going to hold out for a good little while and on uh, into uh, March. I showed you the, the European weeklies if I took you into the CSF the CFS model, the American version of that, it's starting to uh, sort of agree on, on that in some of its runs as well. It's run four times a day, and it's a lot more sporadic uh, of a model than what the Euro usually is. But some of its runs are dialing into that as well. So I think all signs are pointing to the fact that we're going to go into a much colder pattern again. The question is, when are we going to go into that uh, colder pattern again? And I would look for that uh, colder pattern to start with the storm on the first. I don't think that's probably when the bitter cold comes unless we get a big snowpack down with that. If we get a snowpack down with that, well, that's a game changer, absolutely. But uh, right now, my best guess on this is, is going to be a rain to some snow for some parts of the area. I don't see this as a mega snow maker for us, but that could change. We'll have to see, uh, you know. Um, 
I'm just not feeling the same uh, with this one as I was with the last storm. Uh, it's, the things just aren't lining up quite as well. But as we get closer to time, we'll be able to get those specifics out to you a little bit more. But as of right now, we'll just go with a, a rain to snow setup in the in the forecast uh, as a possibility, and we'll kind of see from there. As far as the bigger cold, and again, I do think that some below zero temperatures could possibly be on the table. If you look at more of the organic forecasting methods, looking at the East Asia rule, Bering Sea rule, and some things. Uh, related to that. Uh, it does have a signal rolling in as you get closer to about the 8th to 11th of February and I think that may be the bigger game changer where you can get a deeper trough, a stronger system as a result of that and some pretty brutal Arctic air invasion of that. And By the way, uh, whenever you see these EPOs go negative, understand that you usually a lag time here. So, you know, that storm on the 1st, you're, that's right in the transition zone. But once you get to about the 6th to 11th, that's when you're firmly in here and you've been negative a few days, uh, it takes a while for that cold to start to catch up. And I think that's the time that I would look for to start to see that. So again, last week it looked like about the 15th. I would say it's about the 5th through the 10th, somewhere in that time frame now. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that gets pushed up a little bit more. Uh, possibility uh, that, you know, the models are struggling right now and they're always going to struggle whenever you have uh, a big change in the forecast like that. They almost always do. So uh, especially whenever you have a big big uh, high going into the Arctic like this poleward, models are not going to be overly reliable several days out. So it's something we'll have to fine tune as we get there. But bottom, bottom line, the big takeaway from this, folks, cold is on the way again. If you think winter's over, winter is not over by a long shot. No early spring for us. I think we got a long way to go, and it looks like we could have an active uh, track coming here with more winter storms to uh, forecast. Well, that's it for now, folks. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite for Southern Indiana Weather. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.